Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be talking about the 1923S Peace Dollar. We're going to be going over everything you want to know about it, including its history from the design's history to the 1923S specific history and sort of the ever all the information for that, including the values in the VAMs, which are basically, in, in this case we're going to be highlighting maybe three or four that stand out as the more valuable ones. They add value. There are slight differences, and you'll see just what I'm talking about when we get to them, as well as some mint errors. So I'll just go over the general design, which started after um, 1921. 1921, they do a redesign of the dollar coin. They're producing a bunch through the Pittman Act, sending a lot of that to Great Britain so that they can shore up some of their currency problems and rumors that they can't back the silver promise that they have, uh, but as well as commemorate World War One, which had just ended. And then in 1922, they switched the, it's technically a different type because they go from a high relief to a sort of regular or lower relief coin where um, it's, you know, the, the dies don't crack and break and get worn out really easily. Um, they mint until 1928 and then bring them back for 1934 and 1935. They circulate mostly in the West um, and they are brought back again in 1964, but all of those coins get melted once it's apparent that none of them will be used for circulating purposes. Now, the next thing for, for this specific design, it's the highest mintage of any San Francisco issue, even higher than 1922, um, and it was never rare. So some of them, like the 1923 plane, one of the most minted coins, but people thought that was rare because they'd be stored in $1,000 bags, and sort of left in treasury vaults and just places around the country and would be slowly released in the 50s and 60s. With this, it was always apparent that there was a really high mintage, but the coins were struck really poorly. Um, San Francisco is notorious for that. They don't have good eye appeal. They have a ton of bag marks from sitting in those bags and being transported all across the West, which was where they were really most used, even though a lot were made in Philadelphia, they ended up often going to the West, but a lot of them did not even circulate. So that was sort of a big problem in general with the peace dollars, but a lot of the poor strike, they also would not space the dies properly. So they'd be slightly too far apart and wouldn't leave really good impressions. So a lot more lower mint state coins as opposed to the mint state 65. And there's three total 66 and 67s. None of those have been auctioned since 1994, but they're extreme conditional rarities and would bring massive amounts of money um, estimated at about 40 or $100,000. Um, now, the mintage on this coin was about 19,020,000, so just for a sense of how many there are out there, a lot of die breaks as well, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but the real jump is going to be from mint state 63 to 64, and then a huge one getting coins from 64 to 65 in this date. Sometimes it really doesn't make much of a difference, but for 1923s piece dollars, you know, if you can cherry pick an undergraded coin or a raw 1923s in mint state, um, that can be a really, really good find. In terms of some of the VAMs, so first we have the pitted reverse. We're doing top 50 and elite 40, uh, or elite 30, excuse me, ones, and the the values are sort of modestly more, um, or I, I, I guess kind of a double in mint state 64, but not a huge jump from mint state 63. Um, but you're going to see a little bit of this pitting uh, all through the right by the S mint mark. Um, sort of looks like some chips, but it's really just pitting on on the N one as well as near the wing. Um, there's also going to be this uh, reverse retained cud, um, VAM 1i, and that's a stronger cud all through the United, um, sort of going right through the N, the I, and the T prominently. And this one, I think, would be a lot more, people will pay more for it. People really like cuds on these coins for whatever reason, and that's a good find, certainly look. And you can find these on very circulated coins too. Some of the cuds come in on VF, XF, even uh, lower than VF, really circulated stuff. So always have an eye out. There's also um, the VAM 1W, which again, we don't have much detail on, but it's a die break in the hair. You can see it right here pretty clearly, um, a big marker behind the tiara. There's just going to be a little bit of metal sort of clumped there. That's really the main marker where I would be looking. Um, and then we also have a few mint errors. So this one was struck through something pretty significantly on the back. Unfortunately, it got scratched, which probably took off some value, but it circulated pretty well. Um, was about AU and ANAX net grade, so they downgraded it and called it an AU details net grade XF40. But something came between the, the striking the dies and the planchet when it was getting struck. So it 
its impression was really muted. This sold for six hundred and thirty dollars, as opposed to like twenty bucks uh, would have been really the value in two thousand and seven. If there wasn't any strike through error, there's also going to be this pretty rare nineteen twenty three S error. It's a die adjustment striker. It's a test piece and it's off center. So sold for five thousand three hundred twenty dollars in two thousand and eight. Basically, uh, not only did they not did the planchet not properly go between the dies as they came down for the strike, but it was also a test piece, meaning that they were getting the pressure right. So it appears really worn, but it's actually just the pressure is so off that it doesn't contribute to a really good looking strike for the coin. So that's the situation here. And then lastly, this is a detached lamination flap. Basically, there are some impurities in the metal, so it's not like a struck through error. But instead, the planchet sort of breaks down and has this flap, which you'd call a lamination error. This sold for $220 in 2003. So just sort of a nice little review there. Some mint errors, the three main VAMs to look for, and then the conditional rarity aspect to it. A lot to know. Hope that you learned something, and I'll see you on some of my other similar videos. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like the video, comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and some other social media platforms. You can also go to my main channel website, treasuretownyt.com, to learn more about the channel and sort of stay in contact. I also will eventually host all of these videos on coinsmetalscards.com, which will be both news, marketplace, and coin information. I do have the goal of eventually getting pretty much every U.S coin, date, mint mark, denomination on the channel with a similar video to the one that you just watched, and that will likely all be hosted there. Uh, and then I also have treasuretowncoins.com, which is sort of my coin dealing wing, coin dealing only entity that is a little bit less focused on content production. So thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. I also have videos that are not just the date uh, mint mark denomination recap in this format, uh, so you can check some of those out, and I'll yeah have fun seeing you there.